Welcome to this node breakdown for Mardini 2024 with Grayscale Gorilla. This is day 10, and today's node is the Karma Physical Skylop. The Karma Physical Skylop is an extremely useful node for quickly setting up outdoor lighting. What it does is it utilizes the Karma Dome Light and the Karma Distant Light and uses a mathematical model to develop a physically accurate sky for us. So to use it, we have to go to the stage level, right? We have to be working in the Solaris context because it is a LOP level node. Over here, I just have some geometry. What I have is just this positive y-axis column. And then I also have these two lines, one being the positive x-axis and the other being the positive z-axis. Over here, I have a karma physical sky. You can add it just by typing karma physical sky right over there. This is how it comes in as default. Now I've linked this up with my geometry so that I can show you a couple of things. Firstly, I want to increase the brightness of this and we have two options for that. We have the intensity and the exposure. Intensity is going to be a linear increase in brightness. So as we push it up, it's a linear increase. Exposure is an exponential increase and it acts as a multiplier of intensity. So either one is fine to work with. I'm just going to push up exposure to a value of about two. Now, as you can see, our shadow is being cast along the positive Z direction. That means that by default, our sun is positioned in the negative Z direction. How do we adjust that? Well, that's where we're going to look at this solar altitude and solar azimuth. The solar altitude is going to be the rotation around the x-axis. In other words, this is going to be the vertical angle measured from the horizon. So if we take a look at this, I can drop this solar altitude over here. And if we look towards the horizon, you'll be able to see that disk over there. And that's going to be our sun, right? As we drop to zero, it now lies directly on the horizon and we can push it up one degree at a time. So at 90 degrees, that's going to be directly above and you'll see that we have no shadows. Anything past that is going to be moving over towards the side so we can keep going all the way over to 180 and you'll see that our sun now sits over there on the opposite horizon. So I'm just going to set it back to 45 and we can now look at azimuth. Azimuth is going to be the horizontal angle and so you can almost imagine the sun rotating around our y-axis. And that's actually what that sphere over there represents. I have it linked to our solar azimuth. And as you can see, by default, it sits in the negative z direction. If we start moving this along by 45 degrees, you can see that I've moved the sun over to the right. And now it's moving towards the positive x direction, right? So we can keep moving this towards the positive x direction. And at 90, it will be directly on positive x and our shadow falls on negative x. We keep pushing this up to 180. It's now on positive Z. 270 puts us on negative X, and then 360 puts us back at negative Z. Now this angular size over here represents the visual size of the sun. So it's not actually going to increase the brightness or anything, but it is going to soften our shadows. So once again, I've linked this to the size of that sphere. So as I push this up, what you'll notice is that our shadow being cast actually softens. Another thing that you'll notice is as I push this up, if I decrease the solar altitude and look at the sun over there, you'll see that it is a much bigger disk, right? So when using these settings, you can actually end up with a very interesting look for things like sunsets, right? So this is what you're probably going to want if you want that soft sunset look. As you can see, when we drop it on the horizon, the temperature of our light also changes, as well as the color of our sky. The color of the sky is going to be dependent on our turbidity as well as a combination of our solar altitude and solar azimuth. So I'm going to reset this over here. And if we go over to sky, you can see that our turbidity is set to three. This is just the idea of haziness, right? So this is going to be more particulate matter in the air. A value of one is going to give us this clear blue sky. And as we push this up to something like 10, and let me just decrease the exposure, you'll see that we have this sort of haziness. So this might be something like an overcast day you can see that this also affects the intensity of our shadows, right? We have harsher shadows with low turbidity and softer shadows with high turbidity. As for this horizontal blur falloff and our ground albedo, that's going to be that line that we see on the horizon. If we want to change the color, we can, right? So this is gonna change the color of our horizon, but it also actually affects the sky slightly. You can see that there's this blurring from the ground up towards the sky. So of course, this is going to change depending on the color. We can also adjust the fall off over here by increasing the blur so we can have a softer horizon line. Now, we've only looked at using azimuth or altitude, but we can also use location, date, and time. Now, this is going to be a lot less intuitive, but what you can end up with is physically accurate lighting for a particular location in the world. 
For example, if I were to put in the values for South Africa, where I am, I can Google the coordinates and I can do something like negative 30 on latitude and positive 23 on longitude. I can then choose a date. So let's actually just choose March 10th and we'll give it a time, right? So let's just choose 6 p.m. And this is what we end up with, right? We end up with this sunset type look. Of course, you can go earlier in the day, something like two o'clock. And this is obviously going to calculate those rotations that you would get from azimuth and altitude. So going on to a practical use case for this, I just have the scene set up over on the right hand side. I have this procedurally generated terrain over here. And I just want to show you that the other lighting options aren't going to be great for what we want. So let's just try a distant light. If we plug this in over here, you can see that even with increasing things like angle and exposure and all of that, it doesn't look great. Even if we add an environment light as well, we still have this issue of it looking very flat. This is where we're going to start using the Karma Physical Sky. So just tab in a Karma Physical Sky. And even with the defaults, you're going to notice that this looks much better. We're going to once again increase our exposure. I'm just going to push it up by a value of two. And this already looks like a decent environment. Dropping this solar altitude is going to lower the sun in the sky. And then we can use the solar azimuth to rotate around in our scene. So let's just rotate around to an interesting angle. Right, so as you can see, you get really good lighting really quickly when you use the Karma Physical Sky. I also want to show you something that you can do if you bring this light back around. So I'm just going to have this peak over the top of the mountain over there, decreasing the exposure so I can see where the sun is. Let's just have it peak over like this. Go ahead and push up the exposure. And then let's enable a Karma Fog Box over here. And what you end up with is this really great look where you end up with a bit of a glow around the edges of where the sun is peeking through. So once again, this file is going to be available for download. You can open it up and mess around with it. There's also a lot of great techniques and things that I use for generating terrains. None of this is based off of assets or textures. It's all entirely procedural. You can go through the OBJ network over here if you're interested in this. So playing around with this is a lot of fun because you end up with very good looking lighting very easily. And so I would recommend testing it out, especially with a scene like this. It's just really satisfying playing around with the Karma Physical Sky. So that's all for this tutorial. I will be seeing you for day 11, which is going to be the start of a new week, where we're going to be looking at some VFX tool sets. So I'll see you tomorrow with the Vellum Brush Sop.